It was like, you know, someone who really wants to make it big in this dunya, and they say, man, I got some money, I don't know how to use it. So they go to their business buddies, got any good business ideas? Where should I be putting my money right now? The market's kind of bad, where should I invest? Right? So there's this idea of putting your money in a good place, or finding, you know, what's, what's called diversifying your portfolio. Right? That's called diversifying your portfolio. So you don't put all your money in one, you know, investment. You put a little here, put a little here, put a little here. Put... What is this person doing? Uh, Ashokani rahimahullah comments, Fi wujuhil khair. All kinds of faces of good things. He's like, maybe I should put a little here, a little here, a little here, a little here. So I have this diversified portfolio when I go to Allah Azza wa It's incredible this mindset that if you direct it towards Allah, it brings a yield, and people direct it towards dunya to bring a yield for themselves in this dunya. Anyhow, Asan al-Ra'i also offers some, a really remarkable insight on the ayah. He says, فَأَمَّا مَنْ أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى تَدُلُّ عَلَىٰ أَنَّهُ اتَّقَى الْبُخْلِ He says he gave and he was afraid. It illustrates he was afraid of being cheap. That's why he gave. He gave and he, as he was afraid, meaning while becomes haliyah. He gave as he was afraid, meaning he was afraid of becoming those who are cheap, who will hold on. My teacher used to give this example about our relationship with Allah. When we give, is it really our money we're giving? Is it really ours? No. But we know, think, do, I don't know if I've told you this experiment with your kids before, try it, it's a lot of fun. You get a lollipop, you get a candy, something nice, right? And you're about to eat it, and your child sees it. What does your child say? Can I have it? Can I have it? Dad, can I please have it? Just a little. And he said, okay, okay. You can hold it. You can, okay, you can have it, just a little piece. You give it to them, just to hold, and then you ask for it back. Can I have it back? What do they say? <laughs> Mine! All of us, within seconds it becomes yours. Allah asks us for money, Allah asks us, Qardan Hasana, give me a loan, beautiful loan. He, gives, he says, let me tell you a business transaction, tijaratin. He gives us all these terminologies, why? Because we start believing what? It's ours. It's ours. It's not his, it's ours. SubhanAllah. We start thinking, we're the owners. That's what happens with money. Money is the, the man is the essential thing that makes you start thinking, you're in charge. And who have you replaced psychologically? Maybe in your aqidah you still say, La ilaha illallah. Maybe in your salah you still say, Allahu Akbar. But what is your heart testifying to every time you look at the account balance? What's your heart testifying to? Where is your heart going? It's already testified that I own this wealth. This is mine. This belongs to me. Right? This is the attitude that Allah is striking at the heart. أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى He gave and he was afraid, afraid he might start thinking this belongs to him. So he gave lots of it. He gave lots of it. The other thing also that's really interesting is, you put a lot of money in a sure deal. You put a little bit of money when you're not so sure if it's gonna, you know, maybe it's a good investment, I'm not so sure. So I'm not gonna put all my savings in it, I'll put a little bit. But if it's a guaranteed investment, what do you do? Like guaranteed, guaranteed. You put it in. You say, man, this is the way to go. It's a sure shot. It's good real estate. It's coming up. The area is coming up. I'm going to buy in this, pro land, this property, this, this area. I'm going to invest in this thing or that thing. Why? Because it's a sure deal. So the amount we give increases when what, what we start believing? That it's a sure deal. And the more you like, mm, there are other better places this could be spent, the less you give. Right? And so this person fears, before my other instinct kicks in and I say, no, 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 maybe I shouldn't give this much, before he even gets to that point, he just gives, أَعْطَى وَالتَّقَى This is his attitude. And so Allah Azza wa Jal, when, when He speaks about this, actually another couple of things we should talk about here is the sequence. Usually, أَعْطَى is giving a lot. It's not even giving a little. أَعْطَى I said is a hyperbolized form of the verbs. So this guy is giving a lot. But you would think taqwa comes first, and then you do ihsan, you give a lot. Right? So it seems like taqwa comes first, and then you give a lot. But what does the ayah say? A'ta wa taqwa. It mentions the giving a lot first, and taqwa second. It mentions taqwa second. And this is part of the style of this entire surah. Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the conclusion first, and then the root second. And we'll find this throughout this surah, it's beautiful. Even what's the conclusion, this dunya or the akhirah? The akhirah. He says, and so what should be mentioned first? Dunya first, akhirah second. When we come to that ayah, what does he say? Wa inna lana lal akhirata wal ula. He mentions first 
the, the hereafter, then he mentions the first. So this is part of the beautiful, remarkable style of this surah. You want to reach that point? What's the seed? You want to see the tree? Think about the root. The root is taqwa. For an individual, for an individual, the sequence is he confirms the truth, then he has taqwa, fear of consequence, and then finally he becomes giving. This is when thinking about an individual. But when you think about a society, to you know, human beings, they always think about themselves. But if they, if we want to live as a civilization, you know, one of the first things you have to give up. You can't have everything for yourself. You have to contribute back to society in every which way. To be part of a society, you have to give. You can't be part of a society without giving. So giving comes first on a societal scale. And then after giving, that's obviously one of the... And we're not even talking about Islamic society. Any society, if you want to be part of a civilization, you have to give. The second thing you have to do is you have to abide by the law. When you come in a society, you have to give and you have to abide by the law. You have to be afraid of the consequences of breaking the law. What is that? Taqwa. And finally, the ideal society will be the one in which the citizens give, they abide by the law, but they take that final step and make it the ideal society, they confirm the truth. Which is what? Islam. The ultimate truth. So the final evolution of a society is wasaddaqa bil husna. So the progression of an individual is one way, and the progression of society is in reverse. It's an interesting comment made by Dr. Fadl Salih as samarai in regards to this ayah. We'll read something that Shawkani rahimahullah wrote in, uh, in his remarkable tafsir Fathul Qadir. أَعْطَى حَقَّ اللَّهِ الَّذِي عَلَيْهِ When he says, he confirmed the truth, he, he interprets that to mean, he gave the right of Allah that he recognized was binding upon him. Meaning he realized what he gives isn't his. It's Allah's right over him. Allah demands. He, he gives you wealth and says, then spread. Then, uh, then spend. Hassan رضي الله تعالى who says, أعطى الصدق من قبله He gave or he confirmed the truth that, من قلبه rather that was uh, deep in his heart. وصدق بالحسنى أي بلا إله إلا الله and he confirmed the ultimate good which is to confirm لا إله إلا الله. وبه قال الضحاك والسلمي الضحاك والسلمي also said the same thing. And Mujahid says بالحسنى as, as I mentioned before the ultimate good refers to الجنة. وقال زيد بن أسلم بالصلاة والزكاة والصوم and others said as Ibn Aslam said, this ultimate good is what? He confirmed the value and good in salah and in zakah and in salah. Meaning obedience to Allah. Meaning obedience to Allah. But the first, according to Ash-Shawkani, فَالْأَوَّلْ أُولَى Meaning the first, the right of Allah binding upon him. That is the first. Because when you think about that, then all of these things come under it. Right? All of these things, meaning the salah, the zakah, la ilaha illallah, all of those things fall under the right of Allah upon us. So that's how he interprets, وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى then, if he fulfills these conditions, then what's going to happen? فَسَنُيَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Then we will make ease for him. We will facilitate for him. Who's we? It is Allah Azza wa speaking. He says, we will make ease for him. In other words, until he makes easy, it's not easy. Until he makes easy, it stays difficult. But for the person who makes this commitment, number one, Allah makes, it, makes an ease for him. But he doesn't even stop there. He says, Lil Yusra. Yusra is the feminine equivalent of Aysar. Aysar means the easiest. The easiest. So Allah says, I will make the easiest easy for him. Actually, He says, I will make the easiest really easy for him. Now, the way you're thinking about good deeds now, according to Allah Azza wa Jal, Allah's gift to this person is, He finds doing good things what? Easy. And He finds them the easiest thing to do. Meaning doing bad things he finds hard. And the easiest, the most natural thing that comes to him is doing good things. Can you imagine what a gift is, is from Allah? Most of us, when we do good things, it's hard. <laughs> when we do bad things, it's what? It's easy. That's easy. Good things are hard. But this attitude, أَعْطَى وَاتَّقَى وَصَدَّقَ بِالْحُسْنَى Guess what gift you get in this dunya? Allah will make the easiest thing easy upon you. Meaning, your attitude about it will change, and it will be the easiest thing facilitated for you, subhanAllah. Now what is this, and by the way in Arabic, for ease, in the Qur'an two words are used, yasir and hayyin. Like, huwa alayya hayyin. Yasir means a task that is done without any difficulty. Hayyin means a task that you are given that is way beneath your skill set. Like if you give a calculus professor a math problem that says, what's one plus one? That would be hayyin for him. It's like an insult. Come on, give me something serious. Right? That's hayyin. Way too easy for him. But yasir means a task which may be up to your scale, but you can perform it without falling into any difficulty. 
even though it's at your level or at your capacity, it's still you, you, you can follow it without any difficulty. The tafsir of this we find in the promise of Allah to us in Surah Al Hajj, when He says, وَمَا جَعَلَ عَلَيْكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ مِنْ حَرَجٍ We did not put for you at all in this religion any difficulty, constriction whatsoever. We didn't put any difficulty in it whatsoever. For some people, prayer is very hard. Prayer is very hard. Can't wake up, gotta finish quickly. As soon as they get into it, they start hyperventilating, like I gotta get this over with, you know. For some people, prayer is hard. For the Prophet ﷺ, everything was hard except what? Prayer. His biggest desire is what? جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. The coolness of my eyes, my relaxation, my comfort, my escape was placed where? In the salah. This is فَسَنُّ يَسِّرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى Now, Allah promised His Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى We find this ayah also وَنُيَسِّرُكَ لِلْيُسْرَى I will make the easiest thing easy for you صلى الله عليه وسلم. Allah is giving us the same option. But there's a difference. There Allah said, وَنُيَسِّرُكَ Here He says, فَسَا سَنُيَسِّرُهُ There's a scene extra here. When Allah promised His Messenger, He said, I will make easy for you. Okay? But here He says, soon I will make easy for him. Soon. For His Messenger, He did not say soon. But for us, for any other person aspiring to reach this ease, He says soon. Why? The Messenger wasallam is, is content. And his heart is already in this direction. And he's not, at, he's not at unrest with his Lord. So when you say soon, why do you say soon to someone? To help them calm down, right? Because they're not at rest. <laughs> they're, they're perturbed. Hey, he's, it's coming soon, it's coming soon. Right? It's a way of easing you. So it's showing that the, the nature of the relationship between Allah and His Messenger وسلم, is very tranquil. And we were not that tranquil. So we want to rush to it. So Allah gives us more consolation when He says, Sa نُيَسِّرُهُ he will give, he will make ease for him, lil yusra. The Arabs used to talk about the horse. You know, the horse is hard to ride without a saddle and the seat and the reins. When you hook up the horse totally, when it's like comfortable to ride, they would say, yassara al faras. Now it's easy to ride. That's how the word yassara was originally used. So what Allah is saying is, I will make all the arrangements for you to do the good deed. The horse will be totally prepared. All you gotta do is just sit there and move the rope a little. That's all you gotta do. All the arrangements for you to perform well and to do the things that will elevate your status with Allah will be made easy for you. All the doors will be opened. All the doors will be opened. يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مِنْ أَمْرِهِ يُسْرَى Whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will make in any, every one of his decisions, He'll make some ease for him. وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ He'll provide him from where you couldn't even imagine. He'll start opening doors you didn't think even existed. All you get this attitude, you start seeing how Allah starts making things easy for you. Similarly, we find in a hadith narrated in Al-Bukhari, the Messenger says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I'malu, get to work. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. If you enjoyed this video, please do share it with friends and family. If you want to see more videos from this series, click on the box at the top. If you want to see other videos, click on the box at the bottom. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Thanks.